This is the bassoon. It's the largest member of the woodwind family. Therefore, it plays the lowest notes. It's also very special because one uses a double reed to play it. And this is the reed. It's two pieces of bamboo cane tied together with wire and thread. And when you blow into the reed, the two pieces of cane vibrate against each other. And that's what makes the sound. Doesn't sound like a bassoon at all. But when I put it on the end of the vocal here, those silly vibrations have a chance to travel throughout the entire instrument, and that's what makes the characteristic bassoon sound. Now, I mentioned this is a large instrument, but the tube of the instrument is even longer. It's nine feet long. So underneath here, the tube turns. And it's very small on the top, and since it is a conical bore, it gets bigger largest at the top. There are lots of keys, of course, and the bassoon is unique from the other woodwind instruments, the clarinet, the oboe, and the flute, because we have a lot of keys that are depressed by using our thumb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the left thumb, and one, two, three, four, five on the right. When I push this key, which is, is all the way here, all the way here, then it closes the final hole for the instrument, and that's why it's the lowest note. That's the lowest note on the bassoon, B flat. It is the highest key, but when this key is closed, that means the note comes from the entire tube being closed. Actually, that's the only note that comes out the top of the bassoon. So if I play a low B flat and someone puts their hand over the top, the note won't come out. That's the only note that won't come out. The bassoon in the high register has a little bit brighter, I hate to use this word because it's a little bit negative, but a little bit sh more shrill and bright. And then for the low register, it's much more deeper and, and mellower sound, which is of course what I love about the bassoon. It's, it has a very mellow sound and it, it blends beautifully in the orchestra, but it also comes out very prominently in solos uh, in a very beautiful way, I feel. The bassoon has many roles in the orchestra, and a composer like Stravinsky wrote the wonderful Rite of Spring, starting with a bassoon solo, with very high notes, and at the time it was written, it was rather scandalous, well, in many ways, but for bassoon players especially because of the extreme high register. And I think his idea was something primal, he wanted, he wanted screaming in a way. Um, and now, as bassoon players, we practice very hard on those high notes so that they can sound s lovely, and uh, um, we, we don't maybe play it as shrilly as it, it was done when it was written. But, but then, um, but Stravinsky then again, when he wrote the Bersus of the Firebird uh, ballet, he used the bassoon for the lullaby. So uh, in a very, very soft, beautiful middle range of the instrument.
I always love playing the Berceuse from the Firebird because it really gives me a chance to show um, emotion and beauty in my playing. And uh, so that's very special for me. It was one of the first recordings that I had as a child. My Aunt Linda uh, gave me an anthology of recordings and the Berceuse from the Firebird was on there. And I just thought, oh, that is so beautiful so beautiful I want to play the bassoon and at age seven I started playing the piano and I love to play the piano but I didn't love to practice the piano and I didn't have maybe a super aptitude for it but um, I used to practice under pressure for my lesson coming up every week so when it was time at the end of fifth grade to choose a band instrument, and I say band because we didn't have a string program in Lodi, where I'm from. So it was time to choose a band instrument, and my older sister played the clarinet. And even in the small town, they probably had 20 clarinetists in the band, and every week they had to have challenges for where they would sit, and they would fight about who got the first chair. And she said, Nancy, play the bassoon because we don't have any. So I thought, well, I'm not, I, that's, that's the instrument that I've heard and I loved, so this is the perfect choice for me, and uh, I did. I loved it right away. My family did not love it right away. Uh, I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and sounded like to them, well, they had two words for it, bedpost and sick cow. Oh, I guess they had another word, foghorn, so. When I started playing the bassoon, immediately something just worked. All the parts came together. And then I got, I was serious, so I started going to, I went to Madison, which was fairly close to my hometown, and I went there to the University of Wisconsin for lessons. In seventh grade, eighth grade, age 13 and 14, I was practicing, and I loved it. And I also loved, I loved playing in the band, but then when I started playing in the Youth Symphony, which happened also very good, the Wisconsin Youth Symphony, uh, which happened quite early on, then learning the symphonic music to me, then my whole world was, was opened. And um, being a bassoon player, it's certainly very important in order to play Brahms, Shostakovich, Mahler, Bruckner, all these wonderful symph symphonic pieces. Uh, there are not solo pieces written for the bassoon by those composers, so um, it's wonderful to be part of a large group and play in an orchestra and have all that sound surrounding you. Bassoons always sit right in the middle of the orchestra, and it's, it's been wonderful to play in, in an orchestra.